Um, I spoke with Kathy Wood just a couple days ago for Crypto World about this because that actually was the remainder of the GBTC shares in that fund, and she has been offloading for several weeks. So she told me, um, you know, she was pretty plain about this. She said this is plain portfolio management. Uh, the price of Bitcoin has been rising, and we do always take profits. However, as you sort of alluded to. Yeah, as I've been saying, the, there is a real philosophy in uh, when to take profits. Uh, if you're up, do not be afraid to take some profits of this and any, any stock, any Bitcoin, any gold, whatever. Do not be afraid to take profits. There is a psychology behind it. Uh, you just have to set your price. Take, uh, you know, play with the house money if you want. But with her, it's the end of the year. She's consolidating accounts, uh, assets, you know, taking loss stock loss harvesting. She's on all this stuff for her company. So it makes sense. She's going to move stuff around. It is interesting, you know, should she get the approval? And it is very likely that if one issuer gets approval, several will also get approval. So that would make you. So you assume, again, it's a big old club, but some of these people are not in it. They have not gone to the secret societies. Uh, some of their kids all go to the same private schools and, they'll, you know, vacation on the same yachts, but we'll see who gets approved. PTC a competitor, and I, you know, would expect that should these issuers get approval, that ARK's Bitcoin ETF would become the main Bitcoin vehicle um, for her other funds as well. Okay, so one to watch there. Um, Bitcoin's just had an incredible year, 150% uh, plus gains this year, despite some of the controversies that have happened, some of the company implosions, or at least leadership changes that have happened. There's an expectation that that could continue next year as well. How much of that is tied to ETF approvals? How much of that is other factors that are at play? You know, assuming you, it happens. Yeah, well, yeah, there is entirely the possibility that there could be an ETF rejection, although it is, you know, I think broad consensus is that is not likely. Again, because it is a big old club and they're all work together. These guys will go for a couple years, work at the SEC, then they'll rotate back and work at BlackRock, Vanguard, Fidelity, or Grayscale. Then they'll go back to the SEC. It's rinse and repeat. So odds are they're going to approve it for their old boys or the good old boy network. Um, the Bitcoin ETF is a big thing. Things have really intensified. You set Bitcoin up 150 this year. It's up 57% uh, just over the last six months, which is sort of the start when BlackRock came out and said, we want to do this Bitcoin ETF. And things have just been building and building from there, up 11% just for the month. So the key there is BlackRock. BlackRock initiated their ETF request, and that's what started the Bitcoin price to go up. So listen to the key words here. It is expected, it's, you know, the whole second half of the year really has been about the ETF story. It is expected to be the biggest catalyst next year, and that's just the start of it, because just a couple of months later, we're going to have the Bitcoin halving, which historically drives a, um, it drives big gains, and then, you know, we're also watching the rate environment, expecting to maybe see some cuts next year. We know that uh, rate hikes has, they have been hurtful to Bitcoin over the last couple of years. So... Now, I have no idea why rate hikes by the Fed would affect the Bitcoin price. And it doesn't make any sense to me because it's a decentralized currency. People want to control their own money. They don't want their money in banks where banks can freeze your accounts for having wrong think or just for any stupid reason at all. People want to control their own money. So I'm not sure how interest rates are really affecting the uh, Bitcoin pricing. But the halving and the uh, ETF stuff is huge, guys. Keep an eye on it. The setup is really strong. There are some concerns, though. Um, it is feeling a little overheated. CryptoQuant has data out today showing that the market is a little bit overheated. They think it is possible that Bitcoin could correct to about 32000 which is the um, short-term holders' realized gain. Um, yeah, the price has just been climbing and climbing. So all of these investors, uh, short-term investors and miners, are sitting on these unrealized profits. And, you know, I think, I think though, also... Yeah, they're sitting on unrealized profits, mainly because end of year as well. They don't want to do any reporting on it until they actually realize those gains or losses. And uh, yeah, if it corrects, you can always dollar cost average in to minimize your impact. It, it is all depending on how you believe in this commodity or this stock or this Bitcoin or crypto. Dollar cost average in, it, it alleviates the pain in any downswings. You just don't know. It's all, it's all speculation. So it should be pointed out that even if there is a short-term pullback, most investors agree that does not really take away from the bull case, which is that if there is an ETF next year, it is going to invite in all of these institutional investors that were curious um, but have been sitting on the sidelines. Exactly. It's going to invite in all these institutional investors, all these regular schmoes who don't want to even worry about how to buy Bitcoin and put it in a wallet. That's a little bit to ask of a normal person to go out. Yeah, go on Coinbase. Buy your Bitcoin with your fiat. How do I get my fiat to Coinbase? And then you get your, your freaking Bitcoin. You do not leave it on the exchange. So, oh, where do I put it? In a wallet. What's a wallet? 
and then they move it to wallet or they get scammed by it, one of those man in the middle attacks or address spoofings and they lose all their crypto, it's going to send a bad message. So let the ETFs handle all the Bitcoin trading, holding, all that stuff. And uh, it's going to open it up to the conventional investors and the institutional investors for sure. Yeah. And of course, you've seen the Bitcoin mining stocks. Most of them are very, very small, but they have had huge gains in anticipation of all of this this year as yeah. well. The whole yeah. universe, it would seem like. Yeah, even the big ones. Yeah. Um, you know, Clean Spark and Iris Energy up more than 500%. And then we're looking at Riot and Marathon up 416%, yeah. 720%. And you know, that's going to be driven by the price a lot. Okay. Yeah, I know there's some Bitcoin mining company stocks out there. Just be wary of that. Go up. It can go up real quick. It can go down even quicker. So just be mindful of those things. Uh, yeah, check it out. There's a whole ecosystem evolving. We got the ETFs on the horizon. Approval probably due in a couple of weeks. And uh, you got these Bitcoin mining stocks and you got Bitcoin itself. So lots of stuff going on. You got the halving. Remember, 430, April 30th is around the Bitcoin halving time. And there is a countdown clock on the nice hash page look up nice hash bitcoin having countdown clock and you all you can put it on your desktop and just sit and do a countdown together you know invite the kids invite the dog get the popcorn and just watch the countdown counter to the bitcoin having anyway i thought this was interesting there's the mainstream media the cnbc clown show is starting to report on all this stuff now more and more so I, I, I never believe the mainstream media. They're always full of lies. They have an agenda. They're trying to make you sell when you should buy and buy when you sell. Never. It's like the Kramer thing, that Kramer clown on this show. They actually have an index where they call it the inverse Kramer. And if you would have followed the inverse Kramer doing exactly the opposite of what that clown recommended, you'd be doing really well right now because the guy's a joke. He's a shill. And uh, yeah, he's just out for the lols and the clicks. And he has an agenda and he's given talking points what to say to in, try to influence people out there. So just be wary of CNBC, do your own research, meaning do the numbers, look at the history. Is this something you believe in? Is this something you want? You go out and just willy nilly buy a Bitcoin mining stock and it tanks and that's on you. You gotta do your own research. This is just for entertainment guys. All right, that's all I got. Go forth, do great things, keep your eyes open. It's gonna be a hell of a year uh, all across the spectrum from Bitcoin to uh, politics uh, to the uh, U.S. implosion. <laughs> it's all looking pretty exciting. All right, I'm out.